<laughs> Amy, and I'm looking forward to speaking with Amy. And it, I just got to say, it is so nice to see so many familiar faces and friends on here. So thank you all for being here. Um, just real quickly, for those who do not know Team for Tech, we are a nonprofit impact accelerator. Um, our mission is to improve the quality of education for under-resourced learners around the world. Um, and the way we do that is by using uh, technology grants and pro bono consulting or capacity building for nonprofit staff um, so that they can amplify the impact of their education programming. Um, and this is all in service of the UN Sustainable Development Goal 4.4, which is to increase um, the number of youth and adults with relevant skills for high quality employment. Um, and, you know, why do we do this? Uh, the forecasts show that by the year 2030, almost a billion youth will not have the skills to get high quality jobs in the knowledge economy. Um, and this relates to uh, a lack of digital literacy, but also um, critical thinking, creative problem solving skills. And we know from the research that access to technology is not enough. It's not, it's not enough to just provide technology to these education programs. It needs to be supported with staff and teacher uh, training or capacity building and scaffolded usage plans so that they know how to use the technology to improve learner outcomes. Um, and so that's what we try to do. We operate at three levels under this unified mission. So we have a portfolio of strategic nonprofit partners. We worked with 54 of them across 23 countries in the past 10 years. Um, and we have a very high touch trusted relationship We were where we were co-designing with them programs to integrate technology into their education uh, offerings. Um, so we've contributed uh, over 19 million dollars to them and help them directly improve learning outcomes for 130,000 learners. Um, in the last couple of years, we've amplified um, our, our programs and we now have permanent regional hubs in Africa, Asia, and Latin America and the U.S. Um, so we have folks permanently wor working out of Nairobi, Kenya, Chennai, India, and now Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, and we have an online community of practice. I hope all of our alumni are in there. Um, it's a way to continue past your project and can keep offering support and sharing resources with now over 450 nonprofit organizations across more than 70 countries, and they're reaching more than 30 million learners. So it's a way to take our learnings from these consulting projects and share them much more broadly with uh, an entire community of education-focused nonprofit organizations. Yes, and so I just kind of covered this. Um, these are the folks in our community of practice um, reaching over 32 million learners across more than 75 countries. Great. Okay, I think this brings us to our guest of honor today, our um, the other Amy Harris. I'm so happy to have you, Amy. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate the uh, the lovely introduction. Um, so yeah, I am Amy Harris. I work for Cadence Design Systems, and I uh, was recently promoted to the Principal Renewals uh, Contract Specialist here and I specialize in system-based sales. Um, I've got an amazing team that I work with every day, um, professionals to the T, I appreciate them so much. And uh, yeah, I got involved um, this last year in 2022 with Team for Tech, and we'll chat about some of the projects that I was involved in. Great, great, great. Yeah. So um, before we dive into the projects, Amy, you know, tell us a little bit about why you wanted to volunteer uh, with Team for Tech. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing for me, right, is that volunteering and giving back is something that's really important to me. Um, I started early on during my college years um, doing some volunteer work around the local area. Um, I worked as a pink lady at the hospital. I worked with the children's equine therapy. Um, and so I really kind of, uh, that fell off for a while, right? I got really involved in my career and doing like all of the business related stuff. Um, and then coming to Cadence, they have a really big um, focus on giving back to local communities um, through their Cadence Cares program. And once I saw that, I was like, yes, it's time, 
you know, it came up, it's, it's my time to do this again. And so um, that's when I started looking into it. Um, I actually have a bachelor's degree in English. I was supposed to originally um, teach high school English, um, but I kind of took a detour and ended up in technology. Um, so, so I just have a really big heart for making sure that the youth have needs met um, and making sure that they're taken care of so that they can be successful. And Team Protect really bridged all of those pieces for me. And it just aligned completely um, and made sense for me to get involved. That's awesome. Awesome. And so I think Soul Foundation was your first project. Is that right? It was. Yeah. Soul Foundation um, is based in Uganda. And uh, we started working with them to uh, really take a look at their current systems that they had. Um, and my particular group, we worked with them on an e-learning and wellness platform um, so that they had an LMS that they could utilize um, to further reach additional beneficiaries, but also to maintain in times like COVID, um, the ability to continue education while they weren't necessarily able to get together. And so right. we to, to identify what that would look like and then set that system up for them. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, we're going to get into all the details of the project. Um, but this project was virtual, correct? Yeah, the uh, the project with Soul Foundation was all virtual. And, and so everything that we did was all online and we were communicating with um, people across different time zones to make sure that, you know, we were all in alignment as to what next steps were. Um, so a lot of iterations virtually, um, and I, I'll tell you the difference between virtually and virtually slash in person is quite a bit different. Yeah, yeah. And then another opportunity came along as, you know, travel resumed and there was a new call for applications for the refugee project and tell us why you wanted to, you know, reapply and do it again. Yeah, I was actually still finishing up on the Soul, uh, Soul Foundation uh, project when the email came out. This was, I think, February of 2022 and from Cadence Cares. And they said, hey, we've got a new opportunity. And this one, travel is going to open up. And we're actually going to do um, eight weeks um, virtually and then two weeks implementation in, in country. And I was like, Yes, this is this is what I was looking for, right? It was so nice to have the background from the virtual only, um, but then to extend it and have the ability to be on site with uh, everybody that we were going to be working with was a dream come true, right? Because like everything really like ramped up and started to change, and there was a, additional iterations even daily while we were in that two week time frame um, on, on site and country. So the ability to work with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, was was amazing. That's so great. Awesome. And it's great to see. I know we have a couple other alumni fellows for that project. I see Louisa and Peter. Um, I think we have a video from the project. Um, Amy, if our Amy Harris, if you want to play it, and then we'll get into more of the details of your projects. Refuge She is a holistic model that attempts to help refugee young women and girls rebuild their lives. And the idea is to take a young woman who may be starting from no security at all, no stability in her life, to find pathways to self-sufficiency. We are giving the girls the wings to fly to ensure that they are able to achieve their dreams that were deferred based on the war-torn countries they came from. We are hitting campus uh, divided into two uh, sub-projects. The first sub-project is developing an e-learning platform. And the second project is uh, remodeling their current girls' empowerment program to give more options for the girls to climb the ladder and, and learn new skills. When you get here and you see faces, that just shakes you in a different way because you feel like you're really making something happen in real life gave us more motivation to make it even better and for sure to finish it. I loved that they listened to our ideas, actually. They took time to ask each one of us what we thought. 
We've uh, gotten a lot of solutions and uh, suggestions. Putting heads together from different perspectives of life it gives you more you know, exposure. From there, you can make uh, proper decisions. Having a challenging environment and something that you're not used to really enhances your leadership skills and your decision-making capabilities. Leadership skills are definitely getting developed and particularly team for tech has really structured it in a very nice way. So you're not just developing those skills, you're developing them consciously. Knowing that some of the things that we're doing right now could have such a long-term effect is really motivating to make sure that we're, we're delivering our absolute best. Ultimately, Cadence Team will leave us with several options of how to move forward. What we hope will come from that is a model that can serve more young women and girls. More young women will come out of that new model being able to achieve self-sufficiency. The other Cadence team is working on our e-learning and digital platform that will ultimately help us scale our services. So we're going to have a platform that offers virtual vocational training, business education skills and mental health services to urban refugee women that can't come to our campus every day. So hopefully it will help us scale into the hundreds of thousands of women. Well, the number one benefit is you get to help someone. Helping people makes you feel good. I get to see the world. I get to meet interesting people, gain new perspectives, um, learn about different cultures. And getting all those different perspectives really makes me a well-rounded person. I think it's, it's one of the best projects I've worked on in more than 20 plus years of career. Honestly, I feel that I have gained more than I've given. I definitely go back with that feeling. Awesome. I love that video. And it's so nice to see so many of you in there also. Um, shout out to those on that project. And we also have friends from other projects here too. Um, so Amy, you know, I would love to just hear your kind of commentary on this. Like what were the, the highlights for you and, you know, the, the key takeaways from that project? I think one of the biggest things that, um, I saw out of it is that we really need to like open our ears and listen because when you initially take on the project you have maybe some preconceived ideas of like what the fix is going to be and what this is going to look like and really being able to be flexible and listen to the needs, make changes whenever it's necessary uh, based off the feedback that you received from the group was, it was vital um, because where we initially started as a group and saying like, this is, I think what the, the answer is going to be to help them. We got in person during that two week period and we started interviewing all the different groups. We would interview different departments. We interviewed the girls, we interviewed, um, all the different people that are involved in, at Refugee. And as we spoke to them, things would change. There was a new piece, a new piece of information that would affect another area, that would affect another area. And so there was a waterfall effect where you really had to be um, adaptable in what you were gonna end up giving them as a solution. And um, so I think that was the biggest thing for me. And that's, that's applicable in everything that we do, right? So a lot of the things that you're learning through the process of working with Team for Tech apply in your everyday life as well. So there's the project at hand that's happening that you're working on, but then what you're also doing is you're gaining leadership skills, um, learning adaptability. There's a lot more that goes into Team for Tech rather than just the project at hand. So I think that's important too. So if someone's interested in this from the perspective of like uh, volunteering for the warm and fuzzies that make our hearts happy, that's first and foremost, the, the number one reason why you should be getting involved. But the secondary right is, is how does it help me hone my own skills? And what does that look like when I take it to my job, when I take it to my personal life and my career. Um, so that that was really big for me. 
Yeah, I love that you mentioned that. So, you know, for those who haven't volunteered with us, we have a whole leadership development curriculum that we implement in the virtual lead up to the project and then um, in reflections on site each day, you know, at the implementation. So, Amy, could you comment a bit more on, you know, your experience of that curriculum and any of the um, activities or readings that you thought were interesting? And then, you know, I love hearing how you also have been able to apply it on your job back at Cadence. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's weekly meetings during the virtual portion of it. And there is a uh, curriculum in place, like uh, Julie mentioned, where we're focusing on, um, I think there are five different ones, and I may have to really think about this. So give me a second. There's a, a growth mindset um, and working against ambiguity. Nice. There was um, focusing on the customer and uh, keeping them the central aspect, um, looking at things from a diversity, a DEI perspective, um, and then the communication that you have both with the customer and internally with, with your group. Yeah, okay. um, and yeah, <laughs> I tried to remember everything, so I hope I ca caught you all of did, them. Um, but then, you know, you have these weekly meetings and we're focusing on um, all of these different pieces. Um, there was one that I took down um, at, it was called Danger of a Single Story. And that just really focused in on the idea that if you're working from the idea of just a single story, it's going to prevent you from seeing and then being able to work with um, a, a more nuanced view of the situation. Um, and so really understanding that that there's multiple sides to any any story, any situation that you're going to be working on. Um, and when you look at it from the lens of a single story, you are potentially creating stereotypes. You're looking at it from a stereotypical kind of way, and that's not necessarily going to be a true aspect of it. Um, and it's an incomplete story. Um, so if you're looking at it from that side, you're not seeing the whole, the whole piece and you're not going to be able to cover and manage and produce results that are going to be long-term successful. Yeah. And I love kind of how that relates to where you started saying that when you got on the ground in Kenya and you were doing, you know, user interviews, um, you were realizing that you, you know, your assumptions were constantly being challenged and you were changing yep. all the time. Um, I'm curious, you know, have have there been moments back on your day job where, you know, that skill or others have like come into play? Absolutely. I am a, a fixer by nature. I want to get to the end results and I want it to be as quick as possible. And um, that's something that really I over the two two programs that I worked with with Team for Tech, I had to really take a step back from that. And instead of rushing to the end goal, really like focus on the journey and adding to the storyline as I went so that my group and I, we could end up at the actual end goal that was going to be helpful to uh, the person that we were working on, working with, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Um, well, I definitely want to open it up. If there are any other questions, you can put them in the chat or um, or feel free to unmute and, and share. Um, we have so many folks on here who have also gone through the journey. Um, so it's great to see you all. Um, but I guess, yeah, I would just say, um, Amy, I would also love to hear like how you feel like this experience, you know, challenged or stretched you and your team, if there were moments that you guys, you know, really had to, um, to stretch your skills, um, and you know, how you guys overcame those challenges. Yeah, I would actually love to invite Louisa and Peter to speak as well to their experiences. They were actually part of the team that I was working uh, with for um, Refugee. So they've got some really great perspective as well. And I'd love to open up the floor for them to be able to communicate about their experience as well. Great. Love it. Who goes first, Peter? <laughs> Go for it, Louisa. You're okay. You're <laughs> he tagged you. <laughs> yes. 
So yeah, thanks everyone. Um, I I would like to just add to what Amy said because um, I've also had the same vision that uh, the skills that we learned during the project highly contributed to my work back, back at Cadence. And I see already like some results, you know, it's been almost a year since the, the refugee project. And I could see how much I could uh, improve regarding how I uh, solve problems, how I manage my activities and the projects that I work with. And since my job is a bit related to customer support, um, there are skills that I could apply just directly. So I just want to <laughs> uh, agree with that. And in addition to that, uh, since we were a group from different locations, different uh, business units inside Cadence, so groups that they don't work with each other, um, I could learn a lot from other uh, people within Cadence. Like, um, I'm, I'm still a junior in the industry, like I'm young and I could like talk to Amy, talk to Peter and have also their perspective um, of, you know, working uh, in projects like this that can also be translated to our normal job, right? So um, I, I would like to add that as part of my experience, uh, I think we have a lot to learn from the NGO, from the people you inter interact with there, and also the colleagues that are going to be part of this project with you. So I learned a lot from them. It was an amazing experience and definitely um, made me a better person, both personally and professionally. I love that. And I think you mentioned that when you got back also, um, then it you it was nice that it, when you got involved at Women in Cadence to like see yes. people you. So I was so much more motivated. And uh, that that is still going, right, Amy? We are meeting yeah. like uh, monthly and, and leading different projects uh, uh, regarding uh, gender equity. Uh, in cadence, so we could keep uh, uh, put in action the skills that we've learned and many things, many, many good outcomes uh, comes from that in our career. So it's something that also benefits us as professionals. Yeah, awesome. but it was amazing. Like, and, and I could see uh, other women, not just Amy, but other participants also joining this, and then you can find your people in, mm -hmm. within the company. You know, this is amazing. Yeah, I love how it helped you build your network. That's so great. Thank you, Louisa. Yes. Um, Peter, please chime in. Peter, how many Team for Tech projects have you done now? <laughs> um, um, I was also on the Soul Project and on Refugee. And before that, I was uh, I did a Kidspire Vietnam virtual project um, uh, the year before. So uh, I've done three of the ten week um, ones, and then I've did a seven week one and a whole bunch of the uh, four day ones where uh, the quick and dirty um, so design great. for impact. Um, and so. Yeah, Team for Tech has been great, and Cadence is just wonderful that um, we um, encourage people to join things like Team for Tech, and it's been a great partnership. Um, one of the things that um, the, the virtual projects were great, and um, you, you really get to see um, the impact that it has. Um, the Kidspire one, we um, mentored girls to um, to um, participate in the Technovation um, Challenge, which is designing a phone app. And um, the team that that um, Pram and Andrew and I mentored um, ended up um, reaching the finals. So, um, so um, that was um really uplifting um and then in seoul um that was another virtual one and and um and i i, I think um 
we help digitize their tailoring program. Uh -huh. So, um, um, and because they have bandwidth issues, uh, we um, video wasn't an opportunity. So we tried to do things um, with with pictures as much as we could. Amazing. With wor words and pictures. Yeah. Um, I'm so, so sorry so, to interrupt, Peter, where I know we're at the bottom of the hour and you're like, we have so many of your projects. I want to say Peter's team from Vietnam, these 14 year old girls from that orphanage, they came in in the top 12 of 1600 teams from over 60 countries in that Technovation Challenge. So it was truly incredible what you achieved. Um, and we are so grateful to you. And I'm going to segue to Amy because Peter is going to be announced as our volunteer of the year for all of these projects at our impact celebration um, in October. So Amy, yeah, please wrap us up. And Peter, we're going to hear more from you at that celebration too. Yeah, Peter, we're so excited to honor you um, and your team and everybody, especially from Cadence, who have just been absolutely amazing. So I, I hope you all share in Peter's award too, but Peter, just amazing work. So every year, um, Team for Tech has an impact celebration. It is in the Bay Area. If you are in the Bay Area or plan to be there, we would love for you to come. Our sponsors like Cadence make it free for everybody to join who wants to join. And so we would love for you to be there to cheer on Peter. Cadence is going to have a table, I think two, maybe two, we'll see. Um, but Pragati is going to chat in some links for you to be able to join. We'll also be honoring Kenya Connect as our nonprofit partner of the year and Barracuda as our corporate partner of the year. So it's going to be super fun, um, lots of storytelling, lots of sharing. And then I just want to also plug our impact report. This is going to have more information about volunteer projects, skilled volunteering, um, our community of practice, regional hubs, and impact stories from around the world. So um, I'm so grateful that you all could be here today. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Amy Harris, for presenting. Thank you to all yeah. our fellows. And thanks for everyone for joining. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It was good thank to see you everyone. All. Thank, thank you. Have have a good weekend. Weekend. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.